So, okay, so this week I wanted to talk about drafting um, because your draft's not going to be due for a little bit, but I wanted to talk about some invention strategies in particular to get you started um, thinking about what you will do for your draft um, for workshop. So, um, and also part of the discussion board post for this week or you'll have to pick one of these invention strategies and use that for your discussion board post which I'll talk about at the end of this here. Um, okay, so your invention, invention strategies. When we um, go into a project, especially if we're not particularly inspired, right? Sometimes the inspiration hits us and we're just overcome with the urge to write. Um, but a lot of times, especially with genres you're not familiar with or comfortable writing in, um, many of you mentioned you'd never really heard of creative nonfiction before, um, maybe the inspiration doesn't strike you. So then, as a writer, instead of just kind of shutting off and not writing, we go to these invention strategies to maybe trigger inspiration in some way. So I want to give you some really good ones that I um, like to use use and that more established writers um, in creative nonfiction also use. The first one is journaling. Um, journaling is a great way to go about this and, and this could be um, journaling your day-to-day -day thoughts and reflections or even your observations about the world. So if you don't want to keep a personal journal, you might, for instance, go and sit in Starbucks or sit on campus and write down conversations around you, write down um, your observations about buildings, about people, um, anything that you're thinking of, even nature journaling. Um, I think someone mentioned um, Walden and things like that. So, so that kind of connection um, with nature, thinking about politics, anything like that, you can put into a journal, which later um, you can maybe take a piece of and, and make into a creative nonfiction piece. Um, another option is free listing. This is where you choose a subject and list as many things um, as come to mind as you can. So, for instance, I might um, choose a subject of um, foods I've eaten and list as many foods I've eaten as possible. And through that I might trigger some um, remembrance of a really strange or emotionally um, resonant meal that I had with a, a family member or with a friend. Or I might think of a time when I was in another country and I ate something that I wasn't um, typically exposed to and that might create or generate a story too. Um, you could also free list um, qualities of your father or something like that, and that'll bring you even closer to character sometimes, too. Another invention strategy are line starters, um, and that goes a few ways. There are a few ways you can do this. You can kind of look through um, books or poems or things like that for the ways that um, people start their pieces and use those lines to kind of jump off into your own reflections or your own writing um, or here's some tried and true line starters for you um, these work especially well to kind of retrieve memories that lead to memoir or kind of more personal writing so one is I used to blank but now I blank so any two words that you could put in there um, I remember blank um, I don't remember blank so I don't remember, for instance, the, when I learned to tie my shoes. Um, I don't remember the last time my parent held me in their arms. Um, but I do remember, so kind of going off of, of those line starters. Um, another one is if I had to do it again, I would blank. Um, so if I had to um, take a class again or, or something like that. Um, a saying I always heard around the house was blank. Um, for me, I might say a saying I always heard around the house is if you do t something 20 times, it becomes a habit. Um, so that might lead me to talking about something um, that I tried to do and make it a habit that either failed or, or was successful. Um, the first time I heard the song blank, I was or we were blank. Um, so this might be a more musical reflection. Um, I know some of you are particularly interested in music. 
Um, blank is the sort of person who blank, so going off the family um, thing. My mother is the sort of person who stuffs um, all of her receipts into one drawer, right? So a little fact like that, you could jump off into a story. Um, and then another, the last one that I'm going to mention here is one rule I never live by is blank. So think about something you never do, a rule that maybe everyone else follows that you you refuse to follow. Um, and that could be interesting and unique way of, of talking about yourself or, or entering into a story. The next one is a memory chain, and I'm going to read you a little um, passage by James Moffat here. Um who developed this idea of the memory chain. Um, he says, You choose an object in the room. Say it's a water bottle. You ask yourself what the water bottle reminds you of and wait for a memory to arise. Maybe it's the time you went to the supermarket and your sons put a case of Poland Spring water bottles on the bottom of the shopping cart and neither you nor the checkout person noticed and you walked out of the store without paying for them. And that reminds you of the time your daughter got caught shoplifting sexy underwear no less and how upset you were with her and how you made her write a letter of apology to the store and how she yelled at you that you just didn't understand and that reminds you of the time you that you at age 13 shoplifted lipstick and wished you'd had the courage to apologize so you see you kind of find an object and let the memories chain off of them by by association um, until you come to to some idea but for invention you just kind of let it go and go as long as the chain will go at this point the next one is clustering which is kind of related um, I'm sure some of you have done this for other writing classes or ideas that's where you take a piece of paper um, I have an example here in this this book hopefully you can see it here of this cluster um, you take an idea and you um, write a word in the center of a circle in this example here they have the word purple um, and then you can branch off with lines and new circles and and they use sunset and lively which I don't really think of a, a sun purple as being a sunset but um, it's kind of you think of words that go out and out and out um, until you come to another idea that um, maybe will will make you um, inspired to write a larger piece perhaps even around kind of one word another idea is to use photographs to trigger um, this can be pictures from your childhood this can be um, pictures that you have around the house pictures that you find in a book or online um, those can trigger ideas um, you can find a picture for instance of a former you so you but maybe a moment that you don't really remember um, that's an interesting way to f reflect back on yourself or maybe your mother when she was much younger before you knew her um, all of those things can generate ideas and thoughts another um, way is through making a map you can actually physically draw a map um, and this will help you remember things too for instance your childhood home your bedroom, um, the street you grew up on, you can make a map of your best friend's house, um, you can make a map of an imaginary place that you went to as a child even. Um, that would be a really interesting and lyric way to approach this. Um, but if you're more of a visual person, I think Sam you mentioned you enjoy um, art, you might draw a physical map to enter into this assignment. Um, another way is research. We've talked about research a little bit, and um, the Brian essay, he used research. But um, another way to use research, I don't know if any of you have read the Maggie Nelson lyric um, hybrid genre piece called Bluets. Um, but in this book, she researches blue, um, and she researches, for instance, scientific ways our eyes see blue. Um, she researches things like the bowerbirds who collect blue pieces for mating. Um, any possible thing related to blue, she researches. And really, she does this because she's just, she's obsessing over this color blue, but through her obsessive research and exploration and reactions to the color blue, we can see that she's also dealing with her own depression and 
and our own sadness um, after a breakup. So all of this kind of clustered and 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 moved together really unfolds a deeper meaning um, and a deeper connection to Maggie Nelson, the writer of this work. Um, so if you're interested in research or if you have a subject, um, for instance, I as when I was younger, I just obsessively researched. Um, Anastasia Romanoff. So I was there was something about her which interested me and connected me in a strangely kindred way, or someone like Anne Boleyn, someone that you feel a connection to. Um, you might just start researching as much as possible, and then you can kind of talk your way through that and connect in in a different way too. Um, another idea is to make a timeline. So to start, um, for instance, with your age. So start with infancy. And think about um, you know what was happening inside you internally and externally in and in the world at that time so you can go through from infant to maybe five years old and think about okay what year was that what was happening in the world um, and what were you feeling emotionally and what was happening um, with your family or, or outside of you so the conflicts for each year of your life is another really interesting way to find and locate these memories. Um, so let me move back here a minute. Oops. Okay, so for your discussion post this week, choose one of these that I've talked about. It does not have to be a finished piece. Um, it can only it only has to be around 250 words. You can just kind of start thinking about this. Um, choose one of these invention activities that you find the most interesting, um, and do it on the discussion board. And remember to comment on two classmates' posts. So. Now we'll, we'll go to this but. Um, this is from a writer, Stephen Harvey. What makes writing, writing of any kind, an art is not invention but shape, shapeliness. The facts, the events, the invented flights of fancy do not make up a work of art. So invention is the first step here that we're doing, but it's not the whole of what will make this art or what will make this uniquely you. So you may want to do one of these, of course you'll do one of them in the discussion post, but maybe try doing all of them and, and find which one speaks to you the most because then you'll take kind of the clay created by one or more of these invention exercises and form it and shape it into something which eventually, I hope, will become art and something important to you. So. And we'll talk about that more next week because you don't have, it's not due this coming week, your, your creative nonfiction piece. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And I look forward to reading what you do. Bye.